Let's take a few minutes to talk about how you can extend Dynamics 365 for sales using some really cool Power Automate connectors. Now, there's a lot available to you. There are close to 1,500 Microsoft certified connectors, but I picked out six that I thought might be helpful for you when you're starting to think about how you're gonna extend your CRM sales applications by using Power Automate. So first, we're gonna talk about Teams. Second, approvals also known as the gateway drug for Power Automate. Office 365 Outlook, we're gonna talk about notifications and also talk about the difference between the notifications out of the box app and your Power Apps notification connector. We're then gonna switch gears and look at some third-party apps, which are Data8 Data Enrichment and Adobe Acrobat Sign. So Microsoft Teams is really great connector. There are 10 triggers and 62 actions. The use case that I want to walk through is every morning a list of one opportunity should be posted in a Teams message as a Flowbot to the sales channel. So this is what that ends up looking like. We're creating our scheduled cloud flow. So this one is set to every day at 8 p.m. You can obviously make that whatever you want. And then we have our first action. We want to use the Dataverse connector to get a list of all of the one opportunities. So I have a nice hint here that I'm gonna call out, use the Fetch XML Builder from XRM Toolbox created by Jonas Rapp. That will help you get your OData query in the trigger. So in the filter row, <coughs> excuse me, in the filter rows, I have here actual close date of today and a status of one. Obviously, these are all your schema names, not your display names. And just above that are select columns, because I only care about a couple columns. I don't need everything coming back. Then we're going to use the data operation connector, which one of the out-of-the-box connectors available to you in Power Automate, to create a table. Then we're going to use that again to use that output in a formatted table. And finally, we're gonna post a Teams message in the sales channel as the Flowbot. So that's what it looks like, and it works really well. Second is uh, we're gonna talk about a flow that combines both connectors for approvals and Office 365 Outlook. Approvals doesn't have a trigger, but there are six actions, which are different types of approvals. Office 365 Outlook is a very complex connector with 25 triggers and 79 actions. In fact, I'll challenge any of you watching this to tell me a trigger or an action that you need in Outlook that doesn't already exist. I do have a note here because you, if you're checking out Power Automate, you'll probably notice that there are two Outlook connectors. There's Office 365 Outlook and Outlook.com. According to Microsoft documentation, Office 365 Outlook is your preferred connector to use for work accounts. The Outlook.com connector will still work, it just doesn't have the same breadth of triggers and actions as the former. The use case we're going to walk through on this one, when a quote is activated in CRM, start an approval. When it's approved, I want to send an email to the quote owner. If it's rejected, I want to email feedback to the quote owner. And this one looks like this. This is actually gonna be two different slides because this is a more complex example. First, our trigger. We're looking specifically here when a quote status is moved to active. So again, we used Fetch XML Builder. Well, I used Fetch XML Builder from the XRM toolbox to get my OData query to use. Then I wanna get details about the owner of the quote. And I'm doing this because I need to use that later on in my flow. So I'm getting from the user table and I'm using the row ID of the owner, which is my unique identifier in the prior step. My second action is another gets action from Dataverse. This time I want to get details about the account on the quote. Now, this is kind of interesting because customer on a quote, as you may or may not know, is a special lookup. It's either accounts or contacts. So in order to make sure I got the data that I wanted, I did hard code this flow to pull information from accounts. If you're using contacts in your potential customer field, you probably want to use the contact table instead of account. Next, we are going to use data operation connectors compose action. And what I want to do here is create a URL to the actual CRM record. And to do that, I'm going to open up a quote 
any quote in my sales hub. I'm going to copy the URL and then paste it here in the input, but I'm going to remove the unique identifier that I got from the quote that I copied and pasted from in CRM, and I'm going to replace that with the quote unique identifier. That is going to give me a URL to that record. Isn't that cool? Now we're moving into approvals. This one, I pick start and wait for an approval. I pulled in some dynamic information from prior steps and then is our conditional. So if my outcome is approved, I'm going to follow the yes path. If not, I'm going to follow the no path. And there's a screenshot of what that email looks like. You can see we've got our nice link to the quote right there that makes life easy for my approvers and my users to just click that link and get to the record. So let's look at our yes path. We want to apply to each, get the comments from the approval, and we're going to email the quote owner. So lots of cool stuff here. If no, again, I want to email rejection and link to that quote so the owner can just very simply make changes. Third example here, we're going to take a look at both notifications and Power Apps notifications. There are two notification actions. It's either an email or a text. And then Power Apps notifications is actually two that you can choose from. It's version one or version two. Power Apps version two, which is the one that I'm highlighting here, means that a push notification will be sent to all of my Power Apps if my criteria are met within the flow. Power Apps version one will send a notification only to one Power App that you specified in your flow. So I think that will help you as you're starting to understand which notification do I want to use, which app you want. Use case for this one, receive an email notification or email notifications in my Flow mobile app. So that's the red one. So in here, we are looking for any time a new opportunity is assigned or reassigned to me, right? Then we're going to do the same data operation connector we walked through on the prior flow to create the URL that will access in CRM. And then boom, push a mobile notification to me anytime I get a new opportunity. So you can see what that looks like, both as the push notification that I received on my phone and also what it looks like in the Flow mobile app if you're using that. Data 8, I don't have a specific example here, but Data 8 is a really cool third party tool. They do data cleansing and enrichment. No triggers, but 12 actions. So the example here, even though it is using old CDS screenshots, I can update that later, um, is select Dynamics 365 records and validate email addresses or phone numbers. Very easy to do with that connector. So if that's a use case that sounds good to you, check out Data Ape. And last, but certainly not least, Adobe Acrobat Sign. Now, there are a lot of Power Automate connectors that provide document signing solutions. So if you're looking for one that isn't Adobe Acrobat Sign, check out connectorreview.com and you can see all of the players are there. I'm highlighting Adobe Acrobat Sign simply because they have the most triggers and actions that allow you to automate more than some of them. So they have two awesome examples here. The first one is the triggered flow example. So that's starting a flow with an action in Adobe Acrobat Sign. When the state of agreement changes, I can specify an event to be when an agreement workflow is completed successfully, and then I can automate following steps to have billing done and invoice the customer automatically. A good action example that I liked in this is when a document has been added to a specific SharePoint library, use create an agreement from an upload document and send for signature. That automates the whole process right there. And then combining that again with the approval flow, top notch. So I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of six interesting ways that you can extend Dynamics for Sales using Power Automate.